fossilization. There's a few uh, vocabulary words for this one. One is the difference between a cast and a mold, and another is what actually petrification means. But let's start by saying, what would it take to become a fossil? Say I wanted to be around in 300 million years for people to look at me. What does it take to become a fossil to last for hundreds of millions of years? Well, there's two main requirements. One is that you have hard parts. There's not much record for fossil butterflies, right? So shells or bones. Two, you need to die in a reducing environment. Reducing means lack of oxygen. The lack of oxygen helps in a number of different ways. So say I died right here, right now, with lots of oxygen around. Um, number one, I'm probably going to get picked up by scavengers, let's just say. Uh, so if you're out in an oxygenated environment, there's more chance of scavengers coming by. But also the decomposers that break down our bodies into their constituent elements after we die, most of them prefer to be in oxygenated environments. So if I died and fell into a lake where there's less oxygen, I have a better chance of being hit by the decomposers slower. And also, say I'm in a lake, there's more chance of sediments coming and covering me up, further reducing my chances of decomposing and of fossilizing. Now, on to our vocabulary, the difference between a cast and a mold. So what I have here is a fossil bivalve. Uh, a shell. So he had a hard part. He was in a reducing environment to start with and he died and got covered up with sediment. Perfect fossilization opportunity. Now when he died the shell stayed much longer than the internal organs, right? They would have rotted away and what would have happened since he was underwater buried in sediments was that the hollow inside the shell would have gotten filled with sediment that sediment hardened and became what we call a cast or a positive impression of the internal part of the bivalve. On the other hand, sediment came on the top too, right? Covered them up. Now we can take that sediment off now that it's lithified and it's rock and we have an impression of the shell. That impression is called a mold. So, to summarize, casts are when you fill in internal spaces and they solidify, and a mold is something that covers up the outside and takes an imprint. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that, but that'll do for a 100 level class. All right, so permineralization. By the way, I'm crouched down like this because it's really windy here and I want you to be able to hear me. Let's talk about these fossilized logs, the petrified national forest. Petrification is actually a combination of two different modes of fossilization, permineralization and replacement. Permineralization is a lot like forming casts. These logs, these trees that are now extinct, died in this lovely, humid, hot, fluvial plain. They fell into the river. They probably got covered up with the sediments. And as they rotted away, the sediments silted inside uh, their, internal, their internal cavities and solidified, giving us what we call permineralization, the internal cast. And if the spaces were small, was replacement. Replacement is a little different. When you, all water has minerals in it, even the bottled water you buy. Calcium carbonate is the most common, but silica is very common too. And silica, which by the way can easily come from volcanic ash, if volcanic ash is in the area, it gets into the groundwater and gives it a lot of silica. So as wood decays on a with 
silica. Silica, SiO2, is the, are the two most common elements on this planet. They make up 72% of all the rocks and minerals. And in their pure form, they're called quartz. Quartz, in its pure form, is clear. But any impurity can change quartz into a different color. Green, yellow, blue, smoky, pink. And so that's why the Petrified Forest has so many different 